It's William Everhart with Quarantine Studio again. Uh, one more update, and this should be the final update for the centerfold slash consumption piece. I know I keep going back and forth on the names. Uh, the sculptor of this, William Paquette, had named this thing initially uh, centerfold. Love the name, but I also kind of like this name of consumption uh, because she's being taken over by this whatever has hardly gone wrong with this young woman here. So um, this is it. This is the final thing. Uh, the only last thing I have to do is maybe add a coat of gloss to this. I've, uh, I've sealed it in clear, but it was a flat clear, and I've gone in and added just a little bit of gloss here and there. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more of that. And so let's take a look at what has transpired since our last uh, review here. Well, as you can see here, I've finalized the details here in the face. I decided to go with the standard kind of white or off-white teeth here, uh, painted in the gums and that sort of thing. There may be a little bit of a wash that needs to go in there. I'm not exactly sure yet. And I'm also thinking about adding some goo dripping out of that mouth. I think that'd be kind of cool looking too. I, I don't know. That might be a little overstated there. I might leave that off. Anywho, uh, we've got that. The eye, I decided to go with kind of a, a metallic kind of a look, a really dark metallic. Uh, you can't really see the detail here on the camera, uh, but she does have a uh, almost black pupil there as well, along with a little highlight. You are catching a little highlight there, uh, but there is a little uh, almost black pupil there as well. Uh, added in a few more color details here on the side of the head. You can see some of that in here. This looked like a big vascular thing here. It's showing up kind of a real dark gray on here. It's more of a, a purplish blue color uh, when you see it in person. And then this thing uh, kind of coming down the back side of her head here. I don't know. This thing kind of looked like a tumor or something to me. So I kind of painted it up in a lot of purples and reds and just kind of marbled it up a lot there. So anyway, kind of interesting looking details there. I'm going to spin this on around. Uh, you can see there was another like lobe and I'm going to, I'm going to slide the model over here a little bit as well. Uh, so you can see there was another um, kind of lobe to this tumorous thing on the back of her head here. Uh, similar treatment, slightly different colors. And then there was yet another one kind of oozing in through her arm here. Now this one is much, much darker. Uh, and that's showing up pretty well on that screen there. Uh, so you got all of that kind of grunginess going on there. Uh, this up here on top, uh, you know, I wasn't quite sure if that was supposed to be bone or... It looked to me more like stretched flesh over it. So I kind of kept it in this kind of marbly flesh. And it is a little bit shiny. It's not too much. Of course, all this tumorous area is very shiny as is this little uh, arm here where it's like the flesh has been stripped off of that. So we've got that going on. I'm going to spin this on around so you can see just more of the details of the face. You can see all of the sinew here for the muscles. I went ahead and added that stuff in here. We talked about this in the last review so that's in there now. And it's starting to really come together. That helps break up the monotony of all this musculature in here. I was just brightening that up a little bit. Okay, so just working my way down here a little bit. Uh, once again, the musculature here and the the sinew that kind of connects the muscles. You can see that here at the top of the leg. Uh, this little dark purplish blue thing here. This is one of those little tendrils, and this kind of wraps around her back and just kind of comes out of all of this nastiness here. So. And uh, there's a little bit of a spine it looked like to me here, so I painted that to look like a spine. It looks like little vertebrae in there, so that's what I did there. Um, the tendril that comes way down at the bottom of the base, there's a couple of these in there. That's just kind of got gored up a little bit more and added a little more blues and stuff inside of there just to kind of help separate it from the rest of the piece. And um, you can now start to see some of the... Um, as I always call it, kind of like afterbirth here, kind of a thing going on here at the base. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin this around so you can see the rest of this, and then we'll get a little closer look on that uh, afterbirth, as I like to call it here, this kind of uh, stuff going on. So let's see if we can spin this one around. You can see a little more of the sinew there on the end of the leg here. Let me use my little pointer here instead of my big fat fingers. Um, the little sinew in here, so you can see it just kind of breaking up the monotony of the red. Um, all of the reds are in here now. It looks really, really good. I'm really loving that effect there. Okay, so there's all of that. Uh, no real 
changes in this area, just, you know, just more goo. Let's keep going. I'm going to pan on down here to the base. All right, so finally we work our way down here to the base itself. And if you recall, I had this kind of marbleized in here uh, with different blues and reds and things like that. I went back over it with kind of a grayish flesh color to level that out. And in the previous video, I was talking about trying to make this thing look a little more like the inside of the alien eggs, the face hugger, hugger eggs. And um, I started going that route, and then it just it blended in too much with her skin tones to me. So I decided to go a slightly different route. I did want to add the uh, little connective tissues and, and just little nastiness in there. And so that is in here now. And uh, if you come by the table at Wonderfest, I'll be happy to show you this in person. Uh, it'll be sitting out there. These kits will be for sale there. And uh, so you can check that out. Pick up one for yourself. And, uh, and I'll also talk to you about the level of nastiness that's in here that you probably can't see uh, on the screen here. Let me zoom in and see if you can see this. I think this is a pretty good side, so maybe you will be able to see this. All right, so now we have a look here at the base and all this gooey afterbirth type of stuff here going on. And um, while there was a ton of detail in the kit already, I decided I wanted to kick up the level of detail another notch. So what I did was took a cotton ball and I shredded that up into a little container into which I poured plenty of Fuchsia Floor Wax and a few drops of the Tamiya Clear Yellow acrylic paints. And what I ended up with is some of this yellowy tissue right here. In fact, this right here uh, is pretty much no blood guts on it. It's pretty much just that color. So I had this yellow stringiness everywhere and um, wasn't extremely happy with it. That wasn't exactly the color I was going for. But um, after I looked at it a little bit, I said, you know what, I think I can make this work because I wasn't really going to put all this blood and guts on it either. I was going to just leave it as connective tissue. And uh, because if you recall from the previous update, I was trying to get the look of the inside of the uh, face hugger eggs from the Alien movies. And um, they used all kinds of, you know, real connective tissues from farm animals and stuff from a local butcher shop, I think, had it delivered anyway. Um, that was all really like a, a white, maybe an off-white. And so I just threw a little too much yellow in there, and I wasn't too sure about it uh, when I put it on here. And it started drying. It kept getting more and more yellow, more and more opaque. And I said, you know what, I'm not happy with it. But I went ahead and let it dry out. Once it dried, I just took another coat of my Bloody Goo mix and kind of washed it on there. And this is the result. And actually, I'm extremely happy with it. It turned out better than I thought it would. And so uh, I'm really digging this. Uh, it will most likely show up in another one of my uh, build-ups here. So I'm just going to spin this around and let you look at all of that ooey, gooey goodness there. As you can see, it's nice and nasty looking. Different colors in here. Let me get my big fat fingers out of the way using my little pointer here. All kinds of little colors in here. And these are all of those colors that I had sponged on here to begin with. So the more of those variations you can throw in there, the better it looks once you throw this extra level of detail on it. And so uh, there it is, man. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And so I've even got a little bit of that connective tissue coming up onto the leg, like it's kind of clinging to... Uh, the body here a little bit. I've got that in a few places. So so there it is. A little more of the connective tissue there on the knee. You can see that's all just paint work there. Uh, this is detail that's actually in the kit. All these little detail pieces here. So it's just a matter of picking those out with paint. Well, finally, we come to the base itself. Now, this I wanted to kind of look like stonework, um, you know, just like a carved piece of stone or, or concrete or something to that effect. And so, once again, I, I just painted this in a kind of a medium gray, went back over it with a sponge, and used lighter variants of gray, even a little touch of white in here in certain places to uh, to bring in the uh, the variations in the colors there. And then once you apply the bloody goo mix, of course some of it is going to run down into the little crevices and that just makes it all the more appealing to uh, to somebody like me. I really like that. It's kind of cool. So there you have it.
This, folks, uh, she is done. This is the uh, final update for this particular kit. I'm going to just spin it around here a little bit slowly for you. So you can just take it all in. If you're going to be in the Louisville, Kentucky area later on this month, the 31st of May, 1st of June, 2nd of June, the uh, Wonderfest uh, show will be in that area. And uh, we'd love for you to come on by and have a look. Uh, this piece will be there on display, and you can pick up your very own copy of this kit. That is all folks. Uh, she is finally done. I'm glad to get this one finished and wrapped up off of my workbench. If you want to take a look at this one in person, be sure to come on by in the later part of this month, uh, May 31st, June 1st, and 2nd. We will be at Wonderfest, which is in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, you can look that up on uh, wonderfest.com, I believe is the website, and uh, you can get uh, location, all the information about the show. We'd love for you to come by, take a look, and pick up a copy of this kit for yourself.